Today's recipe calls for spinach. I'm gonna show you how to make a really easy but high protein breakfast that's gonna be super tasty. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do to start this monster breakfast meal prep is get our potatoes going. Grab a half sheet tray, toss that hunk of metal into the oven box on the middle rack. Set the temp on the baking box to 425 Fahrenheit or 218 Celsius. While that's becoming hot and bothered, we can start cutting the spuds. Grab two medium to large sized russet potatoes. We'll be cutting them into a small dice. The best way to prevent them from moving around too much is by cutting a quarter inch section off to make it flat on one side. Place the spud on the flat side and then cut it into quarter inch sections lengthwise. After that's been accomplished, cut the section into long sticks that are roughly a quarter inch in width. From this point, cut the starchy veg from front to back into the small dice. Do your best to cut everything into the same size for the best end result. A trick to make this happen is using the potatoes that are stuck on the blade as a measurement tool to help gauge the next cut. After they've been cut, toss them in a large bowl. Grab a medium yellow sized onion, cut the top off, and then cut it in half. We are only using half of it, so save the other half for another recipe. Peel all the paper skin off the half you chose. We need to cut this into a small dice as well. Cut the onion from side to side, making super small sections. Do not cut all the way through the root of the veggie. Keeping the root end on will help it stay together, making it easier to cut. After the sections have been made, give the vegetable a quarter turn. Cut the onion into the same small sections from the front towards the root to make the small dice. Grab yourself five to six medium to large size garlic cloves. Cut both ends off each piece. Then do the worst task ever and peel all the skins off of them. Now that you have naked vampire repellent, cut them into really thin slices. Let's jump back to the spuds and add about two teaspoons of a high heat oil to the holding device. Toss the potatoes around in the oil until everything has been fully coated in the fat. Now that everything has been covered, season the goods with a few good pinches of coarse ground kosher salt and some cracked black pepper. Don't be afraid to give them a taste test to adjust the seasoning as needed. You may be wondering why we put the empty tray in the oven. We did this because adding the spuds to a hot tray will help jumpstart the cooking process. It'll also sear them giving us a nice crunchy texture on the outside as well. Pull the half sheet out of the heated box. Add the potatoes to the hot tray. Things should go sizzle sizzle. Make things into one nice even layer to achieve the best roast. Your tray may pop and become uneven. You can simply fix this by pushing the tray down on the opposite sides to make it flat again. Toss the tray of goods back into the oven on the middle rack to start the roasting process. Set a timer to cook this first side for 15 minutes. After the buzzer rings and scares you, pull the goods out of the oven. Give the food cubes a stir up. This way each side can roast and get some color on them. After the mix up, toss the tray back into the fiery heat. Set another timer to cook the potatoes for an additional 10 minutes. We'll roast them for a total of 25 to 30 minutes or until they become golden brown in color and are tender in texture. Times may vary depending on how hot your oven runs. When the second buzzer goes off, pull those bad boys out. Oh, so hot and steamy. To check and see if they're done, lightly push on one. If it gives under the pressure and squishes down, then you know they are done. Grab a large saute pan, the onion and garlic Garlic. Take all this over to the stovetop. Toss the pan over the heating element. Give the pan a light spray of some high heat cooking oil. Should be enough to lightly coat the bottom of the pan. Crank the heat to a medium level of hotness. Allow the pan to become ripping hot. To check if it's hot and ready, drop a few pieces of onion in. If the onion makes a ton of noise when added, you know it's good to go. Add all the onion to the pan. Immediately after being in the pan, give them a good mix up to coat everything in the oil. You need to season as you go, so make it rain a few pinches of coarse ground kosher salt. Saute them for six to seven minutes or until they become a golden brown color. Once they hit this stage, add the sliced garlic in. Saute the cloves for 
a minute or two or until things become very fragrant and smell. When the surrounding air becomes delicious smelling, clear the pan completely out. When the pan has been cleared, turn the burner down to a low temp. The next item we'll be cooking is some fresh leafy greens, also known as spinach. We'll be cooking around one and a half pounds or 681 grams of this stuff that gets stuck in your teeth. You may need to cook more. The goal is for each meal to have half a cup or 112 grams worth of cooked spinach in the end. It's hard to gauge how much you'll need to cook since it shrinks so much in the pan. Add a few large handfuls of spinach to the pan. Give it a small sprinkle of coarse ground kosher salt. After the greens are in the pan, continuously stir the goods around. Cook the greens for one to two minutes or until the large mound becomes a small portion of wilted spinach. When it becomes wilted, and is bright green in color, pull it out of the pan immediately. Toss the spinach on a rack over a half tray. The spinach is going to release a ton of water after it's been cooked. This is why it's best to place it on a rack to allow the goods to drain. It'll also help prevent things from becoming soggy in texture if it sets in the spinach water. Let's move on to the meats portion of the meal prep. I'm going to be using two pieces per meal of uncured turkey Canadian bacon. It's high in protein while being low in calories and fat. Take the goods over to the heating source. Crank the heat to a medium high level. Give the pan a light coating with some high heat cooking spray oil. Wipe the pan with a paper towel to spread it around and to take out any excess oil. Allow the pan to become ripping hot. The hotter the better because we want to achieve a good sear. To check if the pan is hot enough, add a few drops of water. If it sizzles and evaporates immediately, you know it's ready. Add the Canadian bacon. Depending on the size of your pan, add a few pieces. We do not want to overcrowd the pan. Cook the bacon on each side for two to three minutes or until each side becomes a nice golden brown color. I find it helps to put a weight on top of the pieces because they bubble up a bit. Grab yourself four large eggs, dip the pan another spray and wipe it down. Allow it to become nice and hot. Crack in two large eggs. We'll cook them over a medium heat. Give it a light sprinkle of salt. Cook these whatever way that you enjoy your fried eggs. I'm shooting for a over medium style egg. So I'll be cooking the first side for around two to three minutes or until most of the whites are fully set. Once they look good, grab a spat to flip them over. In one quick swift motion, get your flipper under the egg. Once under, give the egg the old gentle flippy floppy. Cook this side for about a minute. The last thing we need to cook is some egg whites. Grab a liquid measuring device. Measure out one and a half cups or 375 mils of liquid egg whites. Should be 184 grams worth. Take the cloudy liquid over to the preheated pan. Add everything, season them with a small pinch of salt. We'll be cooking these over a medium heat. Cook them for two to three minutes or until the whites are no longer running and they're fully set up and fluffy looking. I find the best way to cook them is to allow the bottom to fully set. Then consistently stir the egg whites around with a rubber spat until things are fully cooked. When the whites are completely cooked, clear the pan and allow them cool all the way down with the rest of the goods. It's time to move on to the portioning step of this huge meal prep. Grab the total weight of the loose items and then divide by how many meals you made. In my case, that's four. Each breakfast of mine will have 97 grams of roasted potatoes, 25 grams of the garlic onion mix. I recommend stirring the onion garlic mix into the potatoes for the best eating experience. Following that, each meal will also have 112 grams of cooked spinach, 70 grams of egg whites, two pieces of the turkey Canadian bacon. I tore my round pieces of meat in half because that's how strong I am. Not trying to flex or anything. Joking aside, it'll make it a little easier to eat later on. Finally, toss one fried egg into each container. Pop the lids atop, then toss them into the fridge box for later. Warm them up as needed to your desired consumption temperature level. Add your favorite sauce on top or make them into a tasty burrito. Have it for breakfast or even for dinner. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. 
All right, now that our breakfast meal prep is done, let's give it the old taste of roni So looking at it, it came out looking super hefty and hearty because there's a ton of good food in there. And we also got quite a few different colors going on. We got that pop of yellow, then the green, and that caramelization that we got on the potatoes and the Canadian turkey bacon as well. Overall, it just looks really tasty. So I'm just gonna try to get the perfect bite because if I try to go over every little thing, we'll be here forever and a day because there's so many things. So let's get it. Looks like a good bite. This meal came out super bomb. The roasted potatoes are my favorite just because I love potatoes so much. That caramelization that we got on the outside brings some flavor. That onion garlic mix on top or that we threw in there brings a ton of goodness. The three things together is like the best combination ever. The fat in our whole egg brings that richness and that deliciousness as well. The spinach itself feels nice and healthy and adds that pop of freshness. That salt that we threw in there also brings out some of the natural flavors that they hold. The Canadian bacon itself is super tasty. And that sear that we got on the outside brings a ton of flavor as well. The egg whites, of course, are really good as well. There's so much goodness in this thing. Texture-wise, the potatoes are nice and al dente, so they have that little bite to it. The egg whites are nice and fluffy. Then we get a ton of texture from our spinach. It's slightly crunchy, so it really brings everything together. Overall, this thing is super tasty, as you can tell because I've almost finished it, so you have to make it. This meal prep meal is fairly simple to slap together, and it's easily customizable to fit your needs. Maybe get rid of that healthy spinach and double up on the potatoes, or cut down on the fat and get rid of the whole egg and do all egg whites. There's pretty much endless opportunities. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I have way more dishes than I anticipated, but I'm gonna go finish eating and pretend like they're not there and hopefully they just like disappear or something. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see you on the next one. So looking at it, let's, let's not do that. Bacon, this thing, stuff, all that. And so good, so good, so good. The yolk from our whole egg brings some flat, some flat, yeah, flat. And add a ton more I forgot. I'm trying to think and talk at the same time, it doesn't work.